Okay, so lecture 4.4 four on student confidence. The central limit theorem tells us that, whoa, that was loud. For a large sample size n, the distribution of the means is Gaussian. We saw that last lecture. Students' t distribution is superior for lower sample size and equivalent at higher sample size. So I mentioned last time that we are um, concerned about getting high sample sizes so that this central limit theorem is, is true. Well, when we don't have that, we don't have that luxury, it's nice when we do, we always strive to have large sample size, but when that is not the case, then we can, we can use uh, students' t distribution. Technically, if the population standard deviation is known, even for low sample size, we should use the Gaussian distribution. However, this rarely arises in practice, so we can usually get away with just always using the t distribution. A way that the t distribution accounts for low n is by having an entirely different distribution for each sample size n. It seems like it's a little bit cheating. They were like, hey, we'll just come up with a different distribution for all these. Actually, instead of n, it uses the degrees of freedom nu, which is n minus the number of parameters required to compute the statistic. Since the standard deviation requires only the mean, uh, for our case, uh, nu is going to be equal to n minus 1 um, in our estimates, um, which are uh, estimates that are of the standard deviation. Uh, as with the Gaussian distribution, the t distribution's integral is difficult to calculate. Typically, we will use a t table, such as the one given here, and it's in the um, uh, I forget which appendix it's called, but let's actually pull it up. Um, I think this is the file I have. There it is. Okay. So Students' t distribution is given here. Um, so we have a table associated with this as well. So for each different new value, we have the percent probability here. This is actually an inverse lookup table, so it's a little different than the Gaussian one. Um, because we're typically going to say, okay, I want a confidence level of a certain percent or corresponding to a certain probability. So say I want a 99.9% confidence, then this is the column that I'm going to be looking at. Um, I look up my sample size or new, my degrees of freedom, which is a sample size minus one. Um, and then that row corresponds to different confidence or probability. Um, so 99.9% is given here, and if you want, a, you know, if you have an infinite sample size, which corresponds to the Gaussian, of course, 99.9% .9 corresponds to a t-score of, of about three. So that's how this table works. Um, as with the Gaussian distribution, the t-distribution's integral is difficult to calculate. Typically, we we'll use the t-tables, which is one given here. There are three points of note. So we are primarily concerned going from probability or confidence values to intervals, typically there is a column for each probability, as in the one that we, we just looked at. The extra parameter, nu, takes over one of the dimensions of the table because three-dimensional tables are illegal. Remember, we used to have one, uh, uh, for the Gaussian table, we had each row corresponding to a tenth decimal point, um, and then the hundredth counting for the second or, or the, the hundredth decimal point. Um, we have had to get rid of that because we needed one of the dimensions to be for the, the degrees of freedom. 
Many of the tables are two-sided, including our own, meaning their t-scores and probabilities assume you want the symmetric probability about the mean over the interval negative t-score to the positive t-score, where tb is your t-score bound. Um, so what we're thinking about here is the, the distribution being about the mean and it being symmetric, unlike the, what this looks like. Um, and we're finding the area under this from negative TB, negative T score to positive T score bound. So the table corresponds to these areas here. Um, and it gives them to you corresponding to different confidence or probabilities, which is the direction we would like it to go, which is actually sort of the inverse CDF, um, but that's the way we want to use it. So, example, confidence interval. Write a MATLAB script to generate a data set with 200 samples and, uh, uh, and sample sizes here using any old distribution. Compare the distribution of the means for different n. Use the sample distributions of a t-table to compute 99% confidence intervals. Generate the data set. So we're going to go through this um, uh, here. Sorry, I just wanted to peek ahead. Um, so number of samples we're going to use is, is 200. So that's the number of batches, right? Um, and sample sizes, so this, the size of each sample, we're going to say under one of the situations we'll take 10, in another situation we'll take 20, in another situation we'll take 100. So these are going to get closer and closer to being Gaussian, right? T distribution is going to work for 10, it's going to work for 20, it's going to work for 100, but if you're at 100, you're probably close to the Gaussian, you probably could get away with just using the Gaussian. Um, population mean, we're going to generate some data, so we'll just say the population means 27, population standard deviation is 9, we'll generate some normal distribution data, and um, we'll print out the first 10 rows, um, etc. Uh, so compute the, the means for different sample sizes, so we have to do a for loop here just so that we can um, uh, do the means for different sample sizes, which is a little bit of an unusual situation, but we're just trying to compare different sample sizes here. So we have to draw a little, or write a little for loop here. Plotting the distribution of the means yields figure for 11. So the n equals 10 case is the dark blue, n equals 20 case is the light blue, and then the n equals 100 case is the light green. And you can see that the distribution for higher n is getting tighter and tighter, okay? The spread is, is reducing. And that's, that's uh, uh, what we expect to see, right? We expect to see that, that grouping tighten. And let's go back and see here. Uh, it makes sense that the larger the sample size, the smaller the spread. A quantitative metric for the spread is, of course, the standard deviation of the means for each sample size. So we compute that, standard deviation of the means. Um, so we have standard deviation of the means for n equals 10 is 2.8, for n equals 20 is 2.1, and for n equals 100 is about 1. Okay? Look up t-table values, so those got smaller as you increased n, right? Look up t-table values for different sample sizes and 99% confidence. Use these, the mean of means, and the standard deviation of means to compute the 99% confidence interval for each n. So uh, actually, these are, these are incorrect values. I, I updated this in the notes, and I don't know why. That's why I was looking ahead. This is a slightly outdated version. Um, there is the version that's currently live and unfortunately not the one that we have before us but is given here where um, I use the tinv 
function, MATLAB function. So what tinv does is it, is it looks up based on your confidence level, so 99% is what confidence is equal to in this, um, and you give it the degrees of freedom. So for each degree of freedom, so we have 10, 20, 100, each of them minus one. So we give them TA, so these are the, the confidence, or the, the uh, T scores for 99% confidence and degrees of freedom 9, 19, and 99. And we use that to compute the interval. So these are actually, these are actually incorrect too. They were, they were, I took them out of the wrong column. So these are not only hard-coded, they're also wrong. Um, uh, the interval here is from, so you start at the mean, so the mean of means, right? The mean of means is our best estimate of that mean. And we take the, the negative side, the lower bound is going to be negative 1 times the t-score times the standard deviation of the means, okay? And we'll print that out. So for n equals 10, we have the spread going, the interval going for 99% confidence. So we have a 99% confidence level for n equals 10 that will, the value is going to be between 17.8 and, or 17.9 and 36.3. We have a 99% confidence for n equals 20 uh, that, the, that, that the value will be between um, 20.8 9 and 32.9 and then if you go up to n equals 100 we're going to have a confidence interval 99% confidence interval between 24.4 and 29.7 as expected the larger the sample size the smaller the interval over which we have 99% confidence in the estimate just as you would expect okay so that is the uh, t score um, usage so uh, the, the version that's, that's online is slightly different. Um, it just uses this T inverse. Um, and the only other difference here is that it also uh, gives you the plotting code. So the code used to plot uh, some of these is, is a little slight. I think it's included in this one. Um, so anyways. That's the only difference between the one that we just looked at, though, and, and uh, the one online. OK, so that is uh, students' uh, T distribution confidence. And remember, this is the superior one. This is the one we, we would typically use, not the Gaussian one, unless we have large data sets. Then we can use either one.